This man has started a war on sugar and you won't believe what he says it's doing to our brains. His name is Dr. Robert Lustig and he's an expert on sugar and metabolism. I had him on the podcast last week. The full episode is down in the description for you. And these are the two things that I took away from that episode for you so that you can make your brain sharper and more effective instead of having it feeling like it's rotting away like a tooth left in a glass of Coke. That was a really gross analogy. Number one is having awareness because you don't know what you don't know. And like I said at the start, I thought I was eating healthy. I thought I was giving my brain the optimal fuel that it needed to perform well, but it turns out that I was missing a few pieces. You're probably pretty aware that our food has been designed to get us hooked. The better it tastes, the more we like it, the more we buy. But what most of us don't realize is how insidious these foods really are, how addictive they can be, and how much they slow down our metabolism and therefore our brain function. The food industry intentionally exploits the addictive properties of sugar through both product formulation and their influence over policy and science. According to Dr. Lustig, it's not just the injection of these highly processed sugars into our foods that causes problems. It's also the removal of fibers from healthy foods or foods that we think are healthy that actually wreaks havoc on our systems. Let's use orange juice as a really easy example. Orange juice number one is something that I got off the street this morning. I live in Medellin, Colombia. We went for a run and on the way back, there was a guy who had a bunch of fresh oranges, squeezed them straight into the cup, down the hatch, feeling good, feeling great. Orange juice number two is in a bottle at the store. And this has had all of the fiber stripped out of it. So it's literally just a bottle of sugar. And unfortunately, when you drink it, it smashes your blood sugar through the roof and causes all of these problems. Number one, it increases inflammation and oxidative stress, which can damage neurons and impair cognitive functions like your memory, attention, and problem solving. Obviously not ideal when we're trying to perform at a high level. Number two, it reduces your BDNF. What the hell's BDNF, Josh? That's brain-derived neurotropic factor. You might've heard of that before. It's a protein that is crucial for learning, memory, and higher cognitive function. I can't function if I don't have my BDNF. Number three is it can strip away nutrients from areas of your body like magnesium, it can strip away omega-3s and other stuff like that. So this is obviously not just important for focus, but it's also really important for psychological health as well. Just ask Andrew Huberman. And look, ultimately over time, the injection of these high processed sugars and the lack of fiber in the foods that we're already eating can cause shrinkage in areas of your brain like the hippocampus, which if you didn't know is a key area for memory, learning and deep focus. Okay, now you know that you're essentially an addict. How the hell do you get off this drug? Well, the challenge is try and go cold turkey. If you had someone who was on a drug and you knew that it was causing them pain and stopping their ability to function, you would want them off that thing as quickly as humanly possible. The same way someone needs to go to rehab and deal with a come down by coming off drugs, so do you. You need to be prepared. You need to be prepared for a come down as you come off of sugar. It'll take a few days to readjust. So as long as you're anticipating this come down and this bland period of your life, you're gonna be way more prepared to succeed through it. So remember the key takeaways, number one, having awareness, because you don't know what you don't know. You need to be looking at how much sugar is in your diet really, and how much fiber is missing from your supposed healthy foods that you're eating or drinking. Number two is cutting it out. Man, you might not think it's a big deal, just like I didn't. I was like, well, I'm healthier than the rest of the population. I stay really active. I eat you know, pretty healthy most of the time. But ultimately, the reality is that I'm not trying to be average. I don't want to be normal. And neither do you. You're not trying to perform at a normal level. So there's an extra level to go. We want to be great and stay great. And this is one of the missing keys to get there. So good luck, man. If you choose to embark on this journey, it's going to be difficult, but the payoff is well worth it. Trust me, if you click on the link down below, it'll send you to the full episode where you can check out my conversation with Dr. Robert Lustig. Otherwise, I'll see you next time.